Damn it, ladies. Once again, those clever men in government have thwarted our ongoing effort to fill whole rooms with tampons like a feminine hygiene ball pit. And the motherfucker that bested us this time was a Republican state senator in Tennessee named Joey Hensley. He pushed back against Big Tampon during a debate as to which items should be exempted in an upcoming sales tax holiday. When Democratic State Senator Brenda Gilmore suggested adding feminine hygiene products to the list, Hensley warned that women could use that loophole to hoard tampons and avoid taxes on them all year round, which would be the fucking point. And what would be the cost of allowing women to build tampon forts unfettered? Well, the amount raised by taxing tampons in Tennessee is about 133 grand a year. Out of the approximately, I don't know, $11 billion of tax revenue that the state brings in each year. So slightly over 1% of 1% of the state's income. And I should point out that this actually is part of a larger effort to eliminate sales tax on feminine hygiene products that has already taken root in 10 states and the entire nation of Kenya. And I'm so sick of wishing U.S. states could at least be as woke as Kenya. But when it comes to cultural attitudes towards menstruation, there's a long way to fall, even from the Tennessee Valley. And personifying that point this week is a Hindu leader by the name of Krishnazawash Daji, or something that looks like that when it's spelled anyway. And he delivered a sermon last week where he explained that women who commit the sin of cooking while menstruating will be cursed to be born in the next life as dogs. And not even cool male dogs. Lady dogs. Bitches, y'all. Of course, we've talked about the insane Hindu taboos about menstruation on this segment a number of times before, often in the context of some poor girl being stuffed into a hut for it. But suffice it to say that menstruating women aren't allowed to go to temples or be in kitchens, apparently out of fear that we occasionally go all lawn sprinkler or something. And you might even have seen a reference to this in the mainstream media this week. And that's because a Hindu girls' school in Gujarat, India, made headlines after a group of four female teachers apparently made dozens of girls strip to prove that they weren't lying to get into the kitchen just because they require sustenance to live. It's at least as fucked up a story as it sounds. The group is apparently made up of girls from rural parts of the country where they have basically no access to education. They all live in a hostel on school grounds, and according to the students, quote, the principal, hostel rector, and trustees harass us regularly over the issue of menstruation. We are punished for having periods, end quote. Well, after this latest violation, the students are fighting back and threatening legal action against the school. Of course, I'm nowhere near plugged into Indian politics enough to know if that's a legitimate threat. But judging by the media attention the story is getting, I have reason to believe India's populace is generally fed up with this antiquated bullshit. And on that preview of what we have to look forward to should Trump win in November, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.